Hey, this is Jay, and I wanted to just do a quick video on how to use the Corona Labs Corona SDK documentation. And that might seem like kind of a really weird thing. It's like, how to use documentation? You just read it. Well, kind of. But the Corona docs are really good, but they're not as good as they will be. And I'll show you how you can help make them even better. Uh, but here's here's the first tip that I have for working with Corona SDK. Whatever you're using, I'm using Safari, and so in my little home thing here, I actually have the document uh, documentation pinned right here down at the bottom. It's always going to be there. I know that anytime I want to look something up, uh, I can click my little whatchamacallit up there, go down here, click it, and it takes me to this point right here. And from here, I can go to the different uh, areas. Corona SDK APIs, that's the one I go to 95% of the time. So you get to this point here, and on the left, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a second, but on the right here, you actually have a listing of all of the, uh, I think it's every part of the API that is available. And so if you know what you're looking for, you could do just a search on this page and jump right to it. But let's say you're, you're wanting to deal with widgets. Okay, so over here on the left-hand side, these are different libraries that Corona SDK has. And there's ads, analytics, audio, everything. There's display. Um, uh, everything here and right down here is widgets. Okay, so if I click on widget, it's going to show me here in the left all of the different things for the widget library. And typically at this point, it's also duplicated over here in the right. So everything that is over here in the left is also over here in the right. So I can either choose like new table, uh, new table view from the left or from down here. It's going to be about the same. So once you go there, you can see, okay, now here up at the, uh, up at the top, we'll get back to this section right here. There's an overview, which is usually good to look at. Here's a section that's um, probably the most important maybe right after the the example code or you kind of flip-flop those it's the gotchas section and this is stuff that you really have to watch out for in in some cases like here we've got we've got four different things for table view that's kind of watch out for this kind of stuff if you're using table view uh, some things may not have any gotchas at all but this is something that you really don't want to ignore this okay in syntax this actually shows you how to use the widget in code and this is the actual syntax here and that's important and then all of the uh, parameters down below that but even more important than just the syntax is down here the example code because while that syntax was correct uh, what it showed you was widget dot new table view and then a parenthesis after that but this actually shows that being used in context so you're actually assigning a variable to that and and there's parameters in there and, and so on okay but that's not all of it now the, the thing is that if you're using table view, you could use this sample code to create a table. And I'm gonna have to go off on a little rabbit trail here for just a second. Some of the sample code is so that you could actually copy it all, paste it into a file and run it to see what it does. And that's the best kind of sample code. This sample code is not like that because this sample code requires what's called a mask file. I'm not gonna get into what that is, but you can see here it's looking for a ping file um, inside of a folder called assets. So there's no way, unless you had this set up uh, exactly like that, that you could copy this code and run it. But if the code is not looking for a specific graphic or something like that, in most cases, you can just copy the example code, run it, and see what happens. And that's probably the best thing to do when you're just uh, getting into using a new part of the SDK. The other thing, though, is that even if, even if you had this file, and just in this case, just so you know, you could actually take this out and things will still work fine. But even if you ran this and it was fine, there's still more to table view to know about. And this is where I got caught a lot at first. It was like, okay, I know there's more. There's functions, there's properties, things like that. Why doesn't it show them here? What you need to do is scroll back up to the top and you can see here it says return value table view. And also in some cases it says see also table view widget. Now in this case, this link and this link both lead to the same place. I'm going to go ahead and just use see also table view widget. You click that and now you have a properties, which here it just says it inherits properties from group object and there's a link you can go there. And methods, it inherits methods from group object. You can click over to there if you want. But here are the ones we're looking for. 
These are the table view methods. These are uh, particular, specific for table view. Get content position, insert row, delete row, and so on. And you can click down into those, and now you've got the same thing. You've got an overview. There's no gotchas here, so you don't have to worry about that. You've got the syntax and the parameters that are used in the, in the API call. And then down in here, you have uh, example code. And this example code, let's see, this example code looks like... Now, this one uses a ping file also, so you can't just run this one. But it's still there, and the example code actually does work. So that's the main thing with the SDK API. You can look over here in the left-hand side if you know which call you're looking for, if you know which library it's in. Uh, you know, it's you're doing something with math, so you click on the math thing. You're doing something with transitions, so you click on transitions, and then you got transition cancel dissolve from and to oh transition to that's what I want so you click that one and now you've got the same thing no gotchas but you've got the overview the syntax the examples and then back up here return value is object so we could go to that but down here under C also transitions and tweens and easing uh, and you'll see here that says guide this is going to take you to another part of the documentation that is more along the lines of a tutorial. It's not just the bare bones uh, kind of thing. So here we've got basic usage, uh, examples, more commentary about it. So there's a in, in the guides, there's a lot more detail than in just the SDK API. Okay, so that's the main thing. It's when you find what you're looking for, do the see also also, dive in there and so that you can learn more about it. Because if you're doing transition two, all of the stuff that's in the C also is probably going to be useful for you as you are writing your code. Now, I mentioned earlier about how you can make the documentation better. And the way to do that is right down here at the bottom, it says, help us help you. Give us feedback on this page. Love it, like it, but, or hate it. Now, if I see that there's a problem with it, uh, maybe, the, maybe the example code doesn't work exactly right or something like that, you can click the button here, like it, but... And this will bring up a nice little form here. I like this API doc, but there's a typo. It's incorrect, it's incomplete, it's difficult to understand, and so on. You tell them more. You can put your email if you want to. You don't have to. You can be anonymous if you want, and then you submit it. The cool thing is that the Corona Labs documentation people actually read that stuff, and they make changes based on the problems that you and I find with the documentation. Asking questions in the Corona forums is good, and I've asked my fair share of questions there too. But the first place I go when I have a question is the Corona SDK API documentation online. Take a look at that because in 80, 90, 95% of the cases, this here will answer my question. Now, to, to get to the main page, you go to docs.coronalabs.com. You get right here. Either make a bookmark to this point here or make a bookmark right here so that you always have this available, always have it handy. So it's like all of a sudden you run into a problem. First thing you should do, click the button, go here, look up where you think the problem is. And in many cases, this will solve it for you. You can get back to coding.